Just a couple bad weather fans representing New York. Talking all things sports. Man, what could go wrong? We got Alex, who's a fan of the Knicks. And Mike of the Nets. The yin-yang of the tri-state. Place your bets on the Yankees, Giants, Mets, or Jets. Yeah, you should listen if it's sparking your interest. If you made a vow to your team, don't break it. Bad weather fans is the relation. Relation. That's right. This is Bad Weather Fans, episode number 207. Mike Baseglia, Alex Benezowitz, and we are presented by DraftKings. Brooklyn Nets losers tonight at the Barclays Center versus the Dallas Mavericks with Kyrie Irving. And the New York Knicks get the win versus the depleted Memphis Grizzlies. But some news breaking at the end. If you're watching, of course, Jalen Brunson go de- going down with the ankle injury. And that by far is the most interesting part of that game um, as the Knicks, of course, need him uh, to be successful. We'll break down the Knicks game. We'll break down the Nets game. We'll have our jersey number trivia presented by Dolan J. Trump. And we'll have some fun with the Super Bowl that's coming up um, on Sunday and the NBA trade deadline that's happening on Thursday. I apologize for my voice. It is shot. It is gone. But that's not stopping us from using our favorite app on the internet. Alex, how are you? And I know you got some awesome words to say about our presenting sponsor in DraftKings. Yes, yes, Mike. I'm glad that you um, are doing okay. You sound (laughs) like you're struggling here, but you know, you were booing Kyrie on TV all night. All night. I lost my voice from booing Kyrie. Exactly. On TV. (laughs) So yeah, Nick's win. I wish that was what it was at the end. Yeah, I wish that was the reason. Yeah, uh, you know, Knicks got you know almost lost the game, but you know we are sponsored by DraftKings. Bad weather fans looking for a super offer for Super Bowl Fifty Eight. DraftKings Sportsbook has you covered. New customers can bet on the big game and turn five bucks into two hundred dollars instantly in bonus bets. Right now, the Super Bowl odds are as follows: minus two and a half the Forty Nine ers. The Chiefs are getting two points. Are you crazy? You are crazy if you don't take points with the Kansas City Chiefs. So the money line is plus 105. You are crazy if you don't take the Chiefs. I understand they may lose. I understand that that's obviously a very good possibility. But the Chiefs are the Super Bowl champions. They're a budding dynasty. Dare I say they are a dynasty already. But, Mike, they've been underdogs this entire playoffs and they've won every single game. So far. Well, that's how they got to the Super Bowl, obviously. Yeah, but- yeah it's wild to have the best player be on the Chiefs, but the better team all around be the 49ers. But Mahomes quarterback, I mean, it makes it it, it makes for an interesting, interesting Super Bowl. And I, I'm with you on your belief. Um and, and you I'm, know, I'm with you on the Chiefs on that. I think it's it's crazy because the Mahomes is the best player on both teams, obviously. So he's but like the next five players might be two, three, four, five might be 49ers. <laughs> so like right. no, well, it's don't football. Tell, it doesn't work like that. But you know, don't tell edges, Taylor like, Swift that. Do not tell Taylor Swift that, but you know, whatever. Anyway, so download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now and use promo code BWF for bad weather fans. And new customers get bet five bucks to get two hundred dollars instantly in bonus bets. Only on DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of Super Bowl 58 with code BWF for bad weather fans. The crown is yours. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER or in West Virginia, visit www.1800gambler.net. In New York, call 877-8-HOPE-NY or text HOPE-NY-467-369. In Connecticut, help is available for problem gambling. Call 888 888- 789-7777 or visit ccpg.org. Please play responsibly on behalf of Boot Hill Casino and Resort in Kansas. 21 plus age varies by jurisdiction. Void in Ontario. Bonus bets expire 168 hours after issuance. See dkng.com slash football for eligibility and deposit restrictions, terms, and responsible gambling resources. Thank you, DraftKings. And Mike, New York Knicks. Almost blow the game. Yeah. They're up 25 going into the fourth quarter. The Grizzlies cut it to 20 with about 808 left. Tibbs calls a timeout. We're all laughing like he's getting panicking. And he puts the starters back in, rightfully so. Yeah. Then, you know, it's getting down to 20. And Jalen Brunson uh, turns his ankle. And uh, with about, uh, when was that? Let's see, 531 left. And it's a 20-point game. 
some fans are criticizing Tibbs for that. And, you know, I don't really love Tibbs, but I don't see how you can criticize him because teams score in bunches in this league, even the worst team in the NBA, like the Grizzlies, least talented team in the NBA, like the Grizzlies yeah. right now. Maybe the Pistons may be the worst East team, the Grizzlies, the worst West team. Sure. And uh, honestly, I, I can't get on tips for this because teams score in bunches and, you know, three point shooting is so great, especially when the Grizzlies have a guy like Kennard or, John, or you know, uh, what's the other guy's name? I can't think of it. Kept hitting threes at the end of the game. And and it's just things can happen. And sure. right when Jalen Brunson went out, the Grizzlies went on an even more run. They cut it all the way down to four. And there were uh, the Knicks were up 27. I even posted it at one point in the middle of the in the beginning of the second quarter, the live Spread on DraftKings was 27 and a half points plus for the Grizzlies. Right. You would have won that going away if you took the Grizzlies at that point using sure. promo code BWF on DraftKings. So I can't get on tips here, Mike. What do you think about that? No, I can't either. Um, and uh, as somebody that references this a lot, but back in the 2002 Nets playoffs versus the Celtics, Nets blew a 24 point fourth quarter lead to Boston. Now I'm, it, now I'm not saying this is, um, that's that, that happens a lot. And this is, that scenario, but it's the NBA and you're up 20 with eight minutes left. Leads go fast. How many times have we seen the graphic? So-and-so team goes on an eight Oh run in 54 seconds and it's back to 12. You got to put teams, you got to put players back in the game. This is just an injury that happens. Uh, unfortunate. If you're a Nick fan and you're watching this and you're losing, you know, your best player. Um, it sucks, right? If you're a Knicks fan, it sucks. It's not great, but I can't get on tips for trying to want to win the game, win the game. And, that's that's just you know if they're up forty six if they're up thirty four I get it and I know a lot of people have been critical of Tibbs including myself when the Knicks were up for example the first time the Knicks beat the Nets this season and they were up twenty plus points with two oh seven to go and guys are in the game that's ridiculous right but with eight minutes left no you got to put your starters back in the game you got to try to end it because this is a game of league this is a, this is a league with a game of spurts and when a team makes a spurt. It's 20 to 16 to 11 and confidence happens and things and things get going. So you got to try to win the game. Now, does it suck? Is it unfortunate? Of course. Does it have implications for the Knicks moving forward? Yes. OG Ananobi out. Julius Randall out. Um, I I can't speculate per se, but if I was if I was gonna make a bet on this, Roman code BWF, not that they're gonna be having this here. I have no idea if the microphone's even picking me up. It is. Um, <laughs> But, you know, Brunson's probably going to miss a little bit of time, right, um, to heal uh, because of the injury. But in the long term, if you're a Nick fan, because a lot of Nick fans in the last um, four, four to 12 days have been saying how this team's going to win a championship. If you're in championship mode, you know, playing the Mavs on Thursday, yes, you want to win because it's the Mavs with Kyrie and Luka and, and Jalen's former team, and I'm sure he wants to be there. But I can't imagine, from my perspective, Alex, mm -hmm. a team that's been shady as shit about Julius Randle, about OG Anobi, who's day-to-day, -day, that they're going to let Jalen Brunson play Thursday, even if he's kind of 50-50 or whatever it might be with this injury, if it is not that serious. Which, again, if you're a Nick fan, you hope that. I can't imagine that he's going to be in the lineup Thursday just based on common sense where, yeah, you want to beat the Mavs on Thursday because you want to win all your games. Of course. But from somebody that's seen the big three in the regular season doesn't matter. I mean, wh wh why even force it? Well, like, listen, you know, the Knicks have won 10 of 11. You know, we got some space. You know, you're not the two seed right now. You're close. Uh, What game? There's a game going on. But I think the Bucks are playing now. I, the Suns. That's, yeah, the, the, the Suns. Sun. It doesn't matter. The point is, is like you got some space. You're in a good position for the second half of the season or the last quarter of the season after the All Star break. On in reality, but the second half of the season after the All Star break, and you just don't rush him back. But if he's fine, it's just a twisted ankle. Play Thursday, whatever. But if he's not, then don't. And and just to reiterate the Tibbs thing, it's like he's proven that he will sit Jalen Brunson in the fourth quarter in that Nuggets game when they were won by 170 points. They were up third over 30 going into the fourth quarter, and Jalen Brunson didn't play the entire fourth quarter. So it's it's one of those situations where, you know, and that's against the champs, but it's just you can tell by the flow of the game the Nuggets gave up there on the a getaway game. Yeah. 
of a long road trip. They were like, get me home. Oh, fuck this game. We're lost. <laughs> you know what I mean? And Tibbs saw that and everybody saw it. They're like, all right, this game's over. You know, so but tonight against a Grizzlies team that has literally nothing to lose. They, like, they, they play hard, though. They, yeah, play they play hard. Do. They play they hard. They got some shooters, like I said, and, and you know, GG and, and Kennard and these guys, can, you know, they're OK. You know, they play <laughs> and, hard. And, and hard. you know they did it to us, uh, us the Knicks uh, earlier in the season uh, when they were in Memphis. So they went up big and they came back at the end. You know it's just, uh, you know I, I can't get on them and don't rush J- Jalen Brunson back. Who cares about playing the Mavericks? You already played them last year. You know big deal. Just sit them, sit them for this game, next game if you have to, and then bring them back on uh, f- what is it Saturday when you play the Pacers or even there's four games left before the All Star break. It just I mean. Get the you know he's going to want to play in the All-Star game, but, you know, let him walk out there for five minutes and then sit down. You know what I mean? It's not like Melo oh. and, you know, like whatever. The When he didn't want to get the knee surgery before the All-Star game, he wanted to start in the All-Star game. And, like, you know, that that silliness. It's, it's not like that. So it's just I'm sure he's going to be fine. He walked off the court. He, you know, he went to the locker room. They probably taped him up and they were icing him up. They're like, listen, it's four. Oh, shit. But you know what? There's two minutes left in the game. You're not coming back in this game. <laughs> you know, it's just kind of like. Dude, dude, just just sit. So well, we'll it, see what happens. It it just shows you the the volatility of of day to day too. You're talking about that Nuggets game where you beat them, and then you beat all these other teams. And you know, Nick fans are saying we're we're a championship team. We're going to win the title. Um, and just how fast it can it can change, mm-hmm. and how fast it can disappear. And we'll talk a little more Knicks and about their title chances, or whatever you want to call it, in a second. But. I do I do want to reference that, you know, Kyrie Irving didn't make his return to the Barclays Center tonight. Nice alley-oop and... dunk on them, you know, on the Nets. What's that? That nice alley-oop dunk he had, which he never does that. I saw that. Replay. No, he can dunk. I, you know, yeah. I, I, um, the Nets went so down how big was it? early. Did they, they boo did, him early in the game? They there were some boo. tweets out there that they didn't boo him and whatever, but well, there's been a lot of, the um, game. <laughs> there's been a lot of people shitting on the Nets crowd lately. Rightfully so. They've been terrible, especially the Warrior game, but they did boo him. You know, okay. like, like that. That's the part that bothers me is just report accurately. The Nets crowd was awful versus the Warriors, and people, and, and you know, there were a lot of Warrior fans, but they also booed Kyrie tonight. You know, both could uh-huh. be true. I'm not right. saying the Nets have the, the Nets crowd has been terrible, um, but but both is true, uh, and that 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 irritates me because just be honest about it. And right, um, you know, Kyrie came in. He was hot early. The Nets. Got down big. They were down 24 in the third quarter, and they fought, and they came back. They're definitely better with Ben Simmons. I mean, there's no doubt about it. Unfortunately, it's just not reliable. Yeah. But it's just obvious watching these games that they can just get so much more out of that. Um, the Mavs are frauds, too, by the way. You know, that they're, they're not going anywhere. You can just they tell. They hate each other. Kyrie and Luca hate each other, right? They can just you know? tell. It's just, yeah. I don't know if they hate each other. I mean, maybe they're not, like, sharing swans and meals together but um you know the nets came up short and unlike the knicks who can win with injuries the nets can't mm-hmm. they were on sharp dorian finney smith cameron johnson lonnie walker they're missing four key guys the nets can't make up for that um they're just not good enough the knicks are knicks can miss stars can miss you know og ananobi julius randall they can still win games the nets they can't granted they can't probably win even when they're there um and that's have problems. And, you know, it's funny because, Alex, I was disappointed when the Nets lost to the Knicks because I don't like losing to them. But I was expecting it. And I knew it was going to happen. So I wasn't as irritated from the game standpoint. Take away the, the I don't like losing to the Knicks part. Just say they're losing to a good team. I'm like, they're going to lose. But the Nets were playing good basketball. They had won three out of four. And they got they had a terrible loss to the Warriors. And they got a late an egg versus the Mavs. And these games bother me because they were starting to play better and they lost. And I got upset because I actually started to feel emotions again for the Nets. I actually started to feel energy again towards the Nets. And that's what bothers me. I knew the next game, I knew they were going to lose. I knew that was going to happen. But these games, it was, I thought they actually had a chance and they lost. And that's what peeved me. And I'm never a refs guy. Fuck, they were some two bad calls that really killed the Nets in this game. And if you're the Nets, if there's a call that goes against you, you're not good enough to get through it. Royce O'Neal, Luka Doncic, shoots 78% from the free throw line, but the guy can't miss half-court shots. Explain that to me. This is back-to-back free throws. It was a six-point game with four and a half minutes left. Back-to-back free throws misses. 
Ball comes to Royce O'Neal, can't get the rebound. Ball goes back to Dallas. Kyrie Irving three. It's a nine point game and it's over. And it's just um sucked. Really just sucked. Yeah, that's that's rough, man. That that sounds like it's rough. And ah. the Nets have lost a lot of close games like that all year. So many close games. And that's got to be frustrating. Another close one coming to Cleveland on Thursday when they play the best team in the NBA. Oh, the best team in the NBA. Yeah. You you've been You're on this the whole the whole year that the Cavs are getting no respect None. because they lost to the Knicks in the first round last year. And it's it's funny because it's true. <laughs> It is? <laughs> like they're so under the radar. They lost two starters, and and Donovan Mitchell carries them to like eleven and two record by himself. And then um, I think Garland played one game, and Mobley played one game, some shit like that. And it's it's been crazy. And you know he's been out of this world. Donovan Mitchell he had that one play off the backboard dunk the other day, and and it's just nobody cares. <laughs> it's a combination of reasons. Yeah, it's a combination and, of reasons. Yeah, it's it's, so, it's crazy. Yeah, go here. What's your theory? It's 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 because of what happened to the Knicks last year. Because Cle- Cleveland came into last season with serious expectations. Right. Garland, Mitchell, Mobley, Jared the Allen. Trade. Yeah, yeah. Whatever. Here we go. Yeah. They yeah. lose to the Knicks in five and get embarrassed. The Knicks crush them. They go into the, this season under the radar and nobody's caring. Factor that with with the idea that the team did win a championship with LeBron. So the whole Cleveland underdog thing is toast. Nobody right. cares anymore. So that's what they had going for them before was Cleveland sports had never won a title. Here's LeBron trying to save them. Well, now they have a title with LeBron 10 minus 10 years ago. How many, however many it was five, six, seven, eight years ago, whatever. So nobody gives a shit about Cleveland sports. That's why I say like, look at the Knicks, you know, everybody's like, well, it's cause it's New York and it's bigger. No, it's because the Knicks have been so fucking pathetic. For 20 plus years. Sorry, I know they had three good seasons 2014, <laughs> 2019, 2020, whatever it is. But you know what I mean? Like the Knicks have been not great and have a great fan base and great energy. So when they're good, it's a big deal because it's been so long. But because the Cavs have the history with LeBron, it's not that big deal. But what's going to happen is there's either there's two camps, there's going to be people that are going to the playoffs that are actually like, okay. Cleveland's playing good basketball, or there's going to be the other camp that's like, well, we saw what we did last year to them. It doesn't matter. But you got to be careful, right? You got to be you got to be somewhat careful because I'll, I'll, I'll play revisionist history. You know, the Knicks lost to the Hawks in the playoffs. Yep. I'm not saying I'm, this Knicks team is way better, but careful, okay? The Cavs are good. Be careful that you can just turn it on and beat Donovan Mitchell and these guys that are young and getting better. Just just, just be careful. And as somebody that I think from my perspective, I love the Nets and I have moments where I could be a dick, but I'm always so hum- humble and hu- uh, have humility in my team that I get annoyed with Nick fans that are just like, we'll beat the Cavs. I can't imagine having that perspective as a fan that can just assume we'll beat a team like that. I That boggles my mind. Then that's the part about my, you know, you say, Mike, why do you dislike Nick fans that you could just, just dismiss that you're just going to automatically beat the Cavs because you did it last year. That to me is nonsense. Well, you did get a little cocky with the Nets when they had the stars a couple of times. Alex, that team, that team, that team had generational talent and lost on injuries. And I and I, I wouldn't say, but I never went into a series, Alex, and said, we're going to toast the Bucks. You never heard that from me. You can go back on all 206 episodes of this. And I, you know, I probably said to you, we're going to lose this series. You never heard me. And I will take that to the bank. You never heard me say a guarantee that we'll win a series. I promise you, when the Celtics cut it to 2-1 in, in 2001 and the Celtics took game three, I promise you, I said, we're going to lose game four. We're going to lose game four. <laughs> you can go back and whoever the fuck listens to this podcast, listen, you never heard me be that cocky. Never. Okay. you Not like that, but you did get cocky in ways where when Knicks fans were complaining about calls, in yes. those Nets games, you were like, we'll get yes. the stars, and then you'll get the calls. That I did. <laughs> you That's know, true. You don't have the stars. And That's uh, true. You did, That's you did true. belittle the Knicks a little bit. In those. You got I belittled the Knicks, way. but I didn't yeah. belittle teams that had a chance to win in the, in the playoffs. You did not go into series saying that they would. That's win. true. Okay. That's fine. That's true. 
That's fair. That's fair. And you know, it's just it's catching up to the Knicks right now with their you know back to them as they're missing the three the the two players and they might be missing three players. They're three top players, and it's like two things. It's like Jalen Brunson has been carrying, and the Knicks have won ten of ten of eleven. So let's relax uh, that the sky is falling here, but. Of you course. know, you, you lost Julius Randle and people are saying, you see how like guys like Dolan J. Trump, like do the Knicks miss the Knicks fans miss Julius Randle yet? Of course, we're going to miss him now when you just take him off the team and you don't use his salary to replace him with other players or trade him for somebody. If you ben just Simmons. Pluck, him, pluck him off the team. Ben you're you're going to hold in the roster like it, that's such a, just yeah. a flawed point. And then on top of that, you lose, you trade RJ and quickly for OG Ananobi and play. Precious, and yeah. now OG is out, and you just have Precious Achua and, right. and, and Malachi Flynn, who never plays. So it's just like now, like you really miss quickly, which is why I don't want to trade him. And you, you now you need to replace him. You haven't. You've been lazy doing with that. I mean, you won ten of eleven. I get it. You know things are good, but tonight was a night where you saw that the Knicks really need that second scorer off the bench or ball handler in quickly. And I think even Alan Hahn said it after the game that this is a game they really missed him because Brunson, excuse me, was playing a lot of minutes yeah. and then he goes down. And then in the last few minutes of the game, you wish you had quickly to turn to as somebody who can get a shot and or draw the defense. And Dante DiVincenzo, man, let me just give him his flowers, man. Dante DiVincenzo with over 30 points again tonight, dude. He has been incredible. Like I did not think he had this in him. He was a good player, role player, energy guy, can pop the open three, play good defense, hustle. Of course, I knew that that's what we were getting. We are getting a solid NBA pro. I did not think he was going to play this well. He has been awesome in this system and playing with his friends and knows what he's yeah. doing. And shout out to the other Villanova guy, Josh Hart, who over the last six games is averaging 10, 10, and five and a half. And it's just like, dude, you are crushing it too. And if you're crushing Josh Hart for his contract, man, wake up because you're looking at the scoring numbers. He's not a scorer. He's not going to score no. in the half court. That's not his game. His game is the energy guy, do all the little things, be great in the locker room, grab the boards, do all of the little, little things. And he's just he's just not a shooter. He can't create his own shot in the half court. He can hit. He could score on the break. He'll be fine there. But other than that, it's, it's just not his game. So you can't expect him to do something that he doesn't do. It's like expecting Patrick Ewing to play point guard and get mad at him when he can't play point guard. Just these guys do what they can do, and that's Josh Hart. DiVincenzo fills his role, and that's perfect. And just right now, we are limping to the all-star break. But guess what? The Knicks are limping to the all-star break, winning 10 of 11. You got four games left. Split those. Let's get to the break. Tape up our bandage, you know. Tape up our wounds, yeah. and and let's let's reset for the for the uh, the the fake second half of the year, and and let's roll. You and know? the trade and the trade deadline comes up on Thursday, so Thursday. we're recording this on a Tuesday. Yeah. You're probably most listening to this on a Wednesday morning, afternoon, or whatnot. Uh, mm -hmm. Trade deadline comes on Thursday. Uh, I think Nets and Knicks both in an intriguing spot. I think the the Knicks more for adding a piece, um, like you had mentioned about bench help, and for the Nets, um, getting into a a, a smart decision-making phase you know we ended last episode talking about sean marks and his willingness to not trade guys like a mikhail bridges i don't think that's going to happen so i don't even even want to entertain the houston thing again because i think it's just a waste of space um it's gonna happen they're not trading bridges it's just not no. happening. so yeah. i think for them um I, first of all just happy the nets played tonight I'll, I'll throw out names that people don't know that are nick fans but Jalen wilson noah Clowney, the rookies play wilson played well i uh, help them um, which is good to see, which is encouraging. It is a fan, something to get behind. Maybe I'll uh, trade a nice him. couple of threes. Um, <laughs> you know, Dorian Finney Smith, who's been out with an injury, Spencer Dinwiddie, it's been a mess, and um uh Royce O'Neal, who took 87 shots tonight and made six threes. You know, these guys are gonna be I think for the Nets, those are the pieces that that are gonna be traded, get some assets back for a team that's going nowhere. Um that has to happen. And then for the Knicks, you know, are, is it a Malcolm Brogdon? Is it uh, somebody that can contribute off the bench? I think realistically is, is all you're going to expect. You know, I, I don't think, um, I don't think the Cavs, by the way, when people are like, uh, you know, is Donovan Mitchell going to get dealt the Cavs who have been the best team in the league since the new year turned and are the two seed in the East are going to be like, eh, Let's trade them for four first round picks from the from the Knicks because we think we can't re-sign them. No, the Cavs feel like they're going to go out and win a title. Believe it or not, Nick fans, Cav fans, Cavs GMs and general management think that. So he's not being dealt. Nick, can the Knicks get a Malcolm Brogdon? 
can they get a uh, Jordan Clarkson? You know, and it, like or to even me, a backup big like a DJ Washington or Daniel Gafford. Those are two yeah. other names out there, and that's what'll happen. Give me one of those. Just you, you, I need Brogdon. Like I need that, and I need a, one of the Gafford or PJ Washington. I need those two things, or just get me somebody who can handle the ball and a backup big. Just do that. You know what I mean? Like because the Knicks with you know Mitchell Robinson actually might be back after the All Star break. Tib said today he's going to start practicing right after the All Star break, which is incredible. And so that's that's great. So maybe you don't need the backup big, but get me the ball handler. Like get me the ball. Just get me yeah, somebody here. Handler. We need another but, guy off the bench. Deuce McBride's good, but he's more of a spot up shooter than a than a pure point guard. And it, you you need somebody. <laughs> like it just yeah. If, if anything, tonight was a warning. You you survived and you won ten of eleven, so you can like kind of limp to Thursday and, and make a move and get somebody, and then you're you're you, you can you can roll. But. I don't know, man. I, it's, I'm nervous because there's too many injuries, and and it's just right when Brunson went down, I it's just like another guy that I finally. It's just I I, I didn't want to say it because I didn't want to jinx it, but every time one of my teams get a guy that's you know the guy that holy shit we're so lucky to have him. Yeah, they get hurt. Vinny Testaverde has this amazing play season. They get to the championship game. On. And then he tears his Achilles. You know, Patrick Ewing got hurt all the time. So Raul Rivas, the best player that in, you know, defensive player in franchise history. And he he blows out his knee when he's just like the most incredible player ever. Poor Zingas, like, oh my God, we got this guy. Blows out his knee. You know, Melo gets hurt. You know, DeGrom gets hurt. Uh Matt, Matt Harvey gets hurt. Syndergaard gets hurt. Diaz gets hurt. It's Diaz. just every single time one of my favorite teams gets a guy. That's going to be this guy. They get hurt. And seeing Jalen Brunson go down, I'm just like, are you fucking kidding yeah. me? So hopefully it's okay. He's okay. The ankle, it was a bad twist. It's a bad roll. But he walked off the court. He walks to the locker room. But you know what? That can mean a lot of things. Kobe tore his Achilles, and he walked and hit two free throws and walked off the court. So, like, yeah. you know, y- you never know. You know what I'm saying? And and I hope and you to can- God he didn't tear his Achilles. But oh, you know, hopefully it's just it's just a twisted ankle, and you, you sit out two games, and you come back to play in the All Star game, and you're all good. You Do you know? like the Knicks not telling you what's going on? Do you like? I don't love it. I it's mean, very well, it's very Will ish Well, let me let me backtrack <laughs> a little because yeah, I understand the gamesmanship from the Knicks if they don't mm-hmm. want the league to know what's going on for their trade deadlines, or I mean, just to keep people guessing. So I, I kind of understand where they're coming from, where they don't want to tell you how hurt Julius Randle is. But I let me backtrack and say this too. If Randle wasn't that hurt, like why would you why would you be like this? In two to three weeks, we'll reevaluate and then be like, we really know he's gonna be back in three and a half weeks. We're gonna fuck with everybody. If you're saying that, you're not telling people because you know it's bad. You can't. Like if you know it's good, you wouldn't you wouldn't be like, all right, we'll say it's reevaluated in two to three weeks, but then in three weeks in one day, we'll tell him we'll tell everybody he's back. Like he has to be hurt more. They're hiding something. O- OG Ananobi, he's out day to day, but now it's been six, seven games. It, it, and now I, he's getting ruled out the day before the games. Yes, yeah, something. <laughs> yeah. I. I Maybe I wouldn't be so mad about the the Knicks being like s- sly about it, but I but I'd be very concerned that there's something s- more serious happening because they they can't be like they're, they're clearly hurt bad. It's 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 tough, man. I, I don't love it. I got to be honest. I don't love it. I think there's a lot of gamesmanship, but I think teams it's. 2024 and we talk about this all the time with like let's showcase this player maybe somebody will trade yeah. for him like that doesn't work in this era it's not the 90s where you can get a guy's stats up and then trick a team like Royce it O'Neal doesn't work might, anymore right for yeah. Royce O'Neal this last two games <laughs> yeah look at that you know it's just it, it's, it's it doesn't work that way guys you know so hiding injuries there's so many back channels in the NBA there's no secrets that everybody talks they, everybody in the NBA knows the severity of Julius Randle's injury. Everybody in the NBA knows the severity of Mitchell Robinson. Everybody knows. I don't know the if I agree. 
I, I just, I, I don't see how there can be a secret. I really don't. These agents talk, word gets yeah. around. Yeah. You know, CAA might be running the Knicks, but guess what? They have clients on other teams too. And then somebody might hear something, and somebody might hear something in the hallway, somebody might hear somebody through a phone call on a Zoom meeting, anything. And then word gets around. It's, it's, the, especially in the NBA, this is the league where, you know, you can't, you know, that an hour before the tampering window opens, that team signed with teams. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? So it's just, this is not something that I think is out of the realm of possibility. So that's just me. And I just think it's stupid. Just say what what's going on and, and go on from there. It's very, it's very will punish Mets where like David Wright runs into Ike Davis and he's day to day and then you never see him again. <laughs> you know Crazy. what I mean? So just, uh, I, I just, I, I have a lot of scars there, Mike, <laughs> like yeah, a lot of injury scars. I remember them all. <laughs> it's, it's hard. Wow. So, wow. Uh, no, I understand. I'm, I'm, I'm not. Understand. I'm not excited about this situation here. And you know, when uh, Aaron Rodgers is the other big one that I totally forgot. Well, that's about. the worst. I mean, that was the worst. <laughs> you know, man, that's like, the worst. So it's 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 that's ridiculous. I, I can't have nice things, man. So you know, I was, you're preaching you're to be alone. again. Have nice things. Like, come on. I can't. I can't. I've never won. I've never seen my team win a championship. I mean, the Mets were in '86. Yes, I was two years old. That doesn't count. Yes, it does. You know, it counts. It you counts. get the Giants. You got Hold Syracuse. On. It does count. Yeah, you, you you get your, your wins. Let me tell you, you act why. Like you're this this tortured fan. You know. Let me tell you why it counts, win, dipshit. I'll tell titles. you why it counts. <laughs> because if Nick fans are going to be like, if if I have to hear from Nick fans one more time, how many titles do you have, Seglia, with the net zero? <laughs> well, we have titles. How many have you seen in person? Well, zero. So if you're telling me that that doesn't count for you in '86, then those that title in '73 and before. Don't count for younger. So Nick can fans. the Yankees fans talk about the 26 championships if they've only seen six? Or well, they five? can because they're, you know, the Yankee fans, the best. Oh, they're, they're, they're allowed. Just the best. Okay. No, of course not. Like, oh, in 1926, we won the World Series when, you know, black people weren't even allowed to play in baseball. You know what I mean? Like, Crazy. So, like, who cares? You know what I mean? No, like, shut up. No, no you know, no. it's just it's so stupid. You know, no, of so, course, it's stupid. Yeah. That's why I always say when I get in Twitter fights. Yeah. X fights. X fights. Um. You know, oh, how many titles do the Nets have? Zero. All right, Knicks. You know, love Brunson. Oh, seven, oh, seven, two, 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 six, nine, eight, two, four, four, three, four. <laughs> what was it like watching the Knicks in 1970? Goddamn three. Well, right. I wasn't alive till 2014. You or know? if they say they were, they're lying. Look, I was. I'm actually 67 well, there, years old. There, there, was, there was one dude who was tweeting with <laughs> us, and he's a good listener, and he's like, I was around for that. I'm like, you know what? Yeah. Well, listen, you Congrats, can tell about it. I'm jealous. If somebody shows like they have a normal name and yes. a normal picture, I can believe them. You know what I mean? You can be They're bald, bald or have gray hair right. or something. Right. So you better have shriveled or have penis, gray hair. You know, whatever it is. <laughs> better not look Brother 16 fuck. and say I was around in 1973 because right. I know you weren't. So, yeah. <laughs> you know, that is what it is. But anyway, with the Super Bowl. So you you like we talked about it in the, in the read. I guess I could do the read one more time and then we can get into the Super Bowl talk. I have one. So, I have one more thing I want to rip Nick fans on. Can okay, I do go it ahead first? And then we'll get into the, the read. And then I, uh, I'm sick of Super Nick Bowl fans talk. that are saying that the Bucks can't win because Doc Rivers is their coach and he's bad in the playoffs. Those Nick fans suck. And I'll tell you why. Why? Because your head coach has done shit in the playoffs, too. So it's not fair to rip Doc because he's actually won a title, but you mm -hmm. don't trust him in the playoffs. But Tom Thibodeau is a bad playoff coach. He he just is bad, bad track record. I'm not saying like to me, I wouldn't make that point because I don't personally. I think Tom Thibodeau is good enough as a head coach in the playoffs to win a title. But you can't have the logic of Doc being bad for Giannis and Dame. And that does like if you make that claim, then you have to make the same claim for for tips. And that to me is inaccurate. And I think anybody that makes that point doesn't actually know the NBA and just spots in when they can and shouldn't have a voice in talking about it. There you go. Well, it just becomes trolling at that point. You know what I mean? So I, I hear you. I hear you. Okay, I that's really it. Want go. You to, Let's hear the read. I really want you to read something, but not now, just at the end of the show because of your voice. Don't look at your text messages right now. Okay. Now, so, now, I, now you have to. Up. Okay. Just, just don't, don't open the I didn't link. look. I didn't look. Okay. I didn't look. So are you looking for a super offer for Super Bowl 58? DraftKings Sportsbook has you covered. New customers can bet on the big game and turn five bucks into 200 instantly in bonus bets. Like we said before, the DraftKings line right now for the Super Bowl is 
plus two for the Kansas City Chiefs. If you do not take the Kansas City Chiefs, you are crazy. But that's okay. That's not from DraftKings or Veritone. That's from us. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So that's what my thoughts are. But if you if you want to go for the go for the gusto, pick the 49ers. Go for it. Do it. You can also bet on the over, which the over is 47 and a half. That's a good bet to bet that over. There's other other kind of prop bets you can bet also. All the bad weather fans BWF promo code goes for everything. So download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now and use promo code BWF for bad weather fans. New customers can bet five bucks to get 200 instantly in bonus bets. Only on DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of Super Bowl 58 with code BWF for bad weather fans. The crown is yours. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER or in West Virginia, visit www.1800gambler.net. In New York, call 877-8-HOPE-NY or text HOPE-NY 467-369. In Connecticut, help is available for problem gambling. Call 888-789-7777 or visit ccpg.org. Please play responsibly on behalf of Boot Hill Casino and Resort in Kansas. 21 plus age varies by jurisdiction. Void in Ontario. Bonus bets expire 168 hours after issuance. CDKNG.com slash football for eligibility and deposit restrictions, terms of responsible gaming resources. I don't know okay. if it's such a, I don't know if it's like just real fast on the nets. I don't think it's, it's probably a bad thing. Mm-hmm. But we have spent no time talking about Kyrie Irving's return because it's because the nets are so irrelevant on that. Yeah. And like, how about okay, him on back. the sideline? What he said, he's like, you know, some fan heckled Kyrie. <laughs> you posted the video at Mike Delivers Pod and some, some fan. Heckle oh, Kyrie yeah. booed him. Why don't you do this for the Nets? He goes, blame Mayor Adams. Like, dude, shut up, man. <laughs> you know, perfect. Mayor Adams, just the such COVID was over day. for like a year when you demanded your trade. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? None of that has anything to do with anything. No, I know, but it, it was just getting injured perfect, in the playoffs. It had nothing to do with Kyrie. Mayor Adams. Because <laughs> I, I do agree on the front yeah. of, He's you know, the, the mandate for the, the Nets and Knicks was ridiculous when road players could come in. Absolutely. That's just Absolutely. insane. Absolutely, hundred percent. I agree but, with you there and him on that. But then Kyrie was just saying him. that. He did I mean, taunt it, was, him. <laughs> it was the perfect. It was the perfect tweet from him. It was, it was. or the quote yeah, from him. It's just uh, whatever. So Super Bowl, you know, you got Brock Purdy, Mister Irrelevant, the last pick in the draft, playing uh, Pat Mahomes, the uh, best quarterback in the NFL, and Super yeah. Bowl rematch. I mean, Brock Purdy wasn't there yet. The last time they played with the COVID Super Bowl, when uh, Garoppolo was a quarterback, he missed that open throw. I think at the end of the game. But either way, you know, I, I just can't see the Chiefs not winning this game. It it's just I'm my overconfident. I'm overconfident in the Chiefs yeah. winning. So I feel like the 49ers can win. But I, I just I, I don't know how you can bet against them. The Chiefs defense is incredible. And, you know, the 49ers have the best running back in the NFL and and one of the best receivers in the NFL. And, you know, great tight end as well that nobody talks about because he's not dating yeah. a, you know, the the most famous uh, singer in the world. Yeah. You know, so you know, it's they have a lot of that too, and like I said, you know, during the first read of DraftKings, is that you know, the Chiefs have the best player, but the the Forty Nine probably have the next five best players. You know, yeah. The, so. the part for me where I I feel confident yeah. with the Chiefs is that they're peaking at the right time, and that to yeah. me feels great. Now the Forty ers don't get me wrong, they're in the Super Bowl, they are in the bye, they're playing well, they're here. It's not like you could just you you don't just play poorly and you're in the Super Bowl, but. They did have some scares in the first two two games. They had so. a lot of scares. And yeah. if Dan Campbell isn't like fourth down and 78, let's go for it. <laughs> they might be in the Super Bowl too. Um, so I think the 49ers <laughs> had a little luck on their side. And the, to me, uh, with the Chiefs rolling and the defense playing right well, the emergence of Rice, Kelsey having some of his better games, and Mahomes just being so perfect when it matters. I, I, I can't go against... I can't go against him in that spot. And I I love and I, I I'm embracing people's hate towards um Taylor Swift and actually rooting against the Chiefs because of her. I'm secure enough in my uh, you know, I don't know what the word is. I'm just masculinity. secure. No, it's not <laughs> masculinity, but like I don't see the Chiefs and her and get upset. Because she's ruining football. I think anybody that feels that way is just really insecure and scared. Very. Like, oh man, NFL is going to go away and there's going to be pop female singers now in the league. I, I, I think that that's craziness. Um, but I'm just going on football, man. I think the Chiefs win. I'll be rooting for the Chiefs. I like dynasties. 
as listen, a kid, I didn't. I didn't yeah. root for Jordan as a kid. Yeah, of course not. But as an yeah. adult, I like it. I want to see LeBron win titles when he was with the Cavs and the Heat. I want to see Mahomes do it. I like it. Yeah, and honestly, with with the the Kelsey thing with Taylor, some people getting so mad about Taylor Swift, it just it's just ridiculous. Like, why do they keep showing her? Like when Tony Roma was dating Jessica Simpson or uh, or what's her face Underwood, it's just like they were showing them all the time too. <laughs> It's just oh yeah. Whenever somebody has parents in the stands, they score a touchdown. They show the parents. You know, you probably see Brock Purdy's parents like four times in the game on, oh, yeah. on Sunday, or Pat Patrick Mahomes' dad who just got arrested again. But like they'll probably show him too. They'll show Kelsey's brother. They'll, they they show everybody. Like it's just it's that's what the NFL is. And Taylor Swift just happens to be the female Michael Jackson right now. So she's sure. like the biggest star in the world, dating one of the star players. Of course, she's gonna be on TV. Yeah. They're not going to show love, like Lamar Jackson's wife because she's not a famous pop star. Like, I you know what love I'm saying? Like, how upset people get, Alex. Me too. I it, love it. it. Makes me I laugh. love it. It makes me want to root for the Chiefs more. That honestly. does too. It's so silly. <laughs> how mad I can't believe they're showing her. Yeah. Well, don't get mad at Taylor Swift. Get mad at NBC. She's just going to the game. You know, she's there. She's not like mandating put the camera on me. Right. Somebody in the booth who's the director and producer is going. Camera six, Taylor Swift. Camera seven, you know, Taylor Swift. For, that's the person. Give it to them. Right. And if they show her five times in the game, let's say, right, for 20 seconds each, 20, 40, 60, 80, 100, that's a minute and a half, like a little over a minute and a half. <laughs> like, you, you'll survive. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, really, like, it's not the end of the world. It's if that's really getting you so mad, then you are a little a little sexist. I got to be honest. Like, who cares? You know, that's just how I feel. I agree. Like, I agree. I agree. I, I, you know, I, I just so. All right. Well, Dolan Jersey number trivia. trivia. Yeah, yeah, I'm pulling and, it up. Um, I think I, I have to read for I have to read first. Then what do you okay. have to do at the end? You have to oh, read the, t- the text. I haven't looked. OK, good. So all right. You ready? Uh, so Jersey number trivia brought to you by Dolan J. Trump. My Dolan gives uh, Mike clues and I have to guess the Knicks player and I give Mike clues and he has to guess the Nets player concocted by the great Dolan J. Trump. All right. He played 11 years in the league, but only one of them with the Knicks. It was during the 2017, 2018 season. I don't know. Robin Lopez. <laughs> I haven't looked at the answer. Hold oh, on. no, I'm supposed to buzz. See, I fucked up. See, I don't know yet. I was it's over. You got it. I did. You got it. <laughs> Are you serious? No. Oh, damn. After that signing is- with the Knicks, he started, he started 30 of 74 games. He appeared in an average. He, he, let's try it again. I got to stop smoking. After <laughs> signing with the Knicks, he started 30 of 74 games. He appeared in an average 13 points and 5.5 boards from the power forward position. 17, 18, you said? Okay. 17, 18, yeah. Uh-huh. You want me to keep going, doll? Keep going. You want more coffee with your pancakes? All right. (laughs) (laughs) His career also featured stops in Miami, Minnesota, Phoenix, Houston, Milwaukee, and the Lakers. Oh, my God. Okay, keep going. He was a member of the 2008-2009 All-Rookie Team after being selected in the lottery by Pat Riley's Heat. I don't know. What's the number? Hold on, let me get there. Uh-huh. He played college ball in the Big 12 at the same university as Rolando Blackman. And since you probably have no... <laughs> okay, this is funny. Probably... Since you probably have no idea what college Rolando Blackman went to, I guess that's what he said. That's See, no Dolan idea. finally made me laugh. And because... <laughs> <laughs> you can't read the comment, the statement. And since you probably have no clue which school this is, I will say it's other... It's. <laughs> It's sorry. It probably, <laughs> you still can't do it. Mike's having a laughing attack right now. Uh, Black, since you probably have no clue which school this is, I will say it's it's other major school in can. It's the other major school in Kansas. Okay. Oh, I know. Yeah, that gave it away. Yeah. He wore number eight with the Knicks and featured on Dolan J. Trump's Christmas card. Michael Beasley. It is. The yeah, Kansas gave, State the thing Kansas gave it away because they don't have many stars. Kansas State right. doesn't have many guys. And one year and whatever. So, okay. Would you have gotten it without the Kansas State clue? Absolutely not. Which is Absolutely funny not. because you usually don't get the college stuff, but that yeah. gave it away. 
but Kansas State, everybody read it, was like but... the number two pick in the draft. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. so it's just yeah, it, yeah. That, that, Rhodes you know was number one that year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Who was a like former Nick? Chalmers hit that shot over him and, and lost uh, a lot of money that night. Let's go for it. <laughs> All right. Nets clues. He That's played clues. 12 years in 12 years of the NBA. This guy's a teacher. He can't type. He played 12 years in the NBA, but only two of those in the Garden State from 08 to 2010. Ugh, I'm not going to get it. With the Nets, he appeared in 40 games and made two starts at power forward. Nope. He was acquired via free agency in 2008, but was ultimately part of the trade to Dallas that brought Chris Humphreys to New Jersey. No clue. I feel like you'll get this, though. No, I have no clue. I have no clue. This, this, has, is, this is not a good year for me. He was a second-round draft pick in the 2000 draft after playing college ball in the Big 12 at the same university as Mookie Blaylock, excuse me, Buddy Heald, Austin Reeves, and Blake Griffin. Uh, okay, now all these were getting somewhere. He carved out a respectable career as a backup forward with stops in Golden State, Charlotte, New Jersey, but more notably in Dallas and Denver. I, I don't know. He shares something in common with former net Jorge Gutierrez. I, know the clue. I, I don't know. With the Nets, he wore number 14. Um, I don't know. Eduardo Naharak. Uh, yeah, I should have known that. Okay, so I'm actually going to text you this just so you don't mess up the the. Okay, hold on. To mess up what? Just read what I'm sending you right now. Well, what about the previous text? The that was that's the same thing, but I just wanted you to read this part. I'll explain why I did this after. But because Mike, your voice is so raspy, I sent you Jada Kiss lyrics, and Jada Kiss has the raspy raspy voice, and I want you to just read the text and let's see how close you sound to Jada Kiss. So wait a minute. So don't read your first one. Just read. The don't read the link. One. It's the link of the lyrics, but I just copied and pasted it to make it easy. Oh, okay. So ready and right. go. Yo, why is Jada Kiss as hard as it gets? Why is the industry industry designed to keep it the artist in debt? And why them dudes ain't riding if they part of your set? Uh. And 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 they part of the set. And why never get it popping? Poppin', but, but they, they party, party to, to death. death. And why are they going to give you for life for murder? Turn around and only give you eight months for a burner. It's going down. Why is selling CD for under a dime? And if you love daddy, why you come with not your nine? And when it's all love, daddy, why you come with your nine? Okay, yeah. Just wanted yeah, to you're trying to get me canceled. All right. No, I, I didn't mean I thought that was that's why I cut it off at the line that it was at. I didn't see that one that was in there, okay. so I apologize. No worries. You're good. <laughs> Lee Valentin yeah. will love this, by the way. So yeah. uh hey, man. I, I think that was funny. I think I lost my like, voice. I I I I just do, ah, don't. like Jada Kiss. <laughs> ah, I just I lost it, dude. It's 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 shot. It's just shot. Oh, I'm tr- it's man. just it's just gone, man. Okay. Well, that's good that it's the end of the show. Then let's see if there's a Jalen Brunson. Hey, if we were on like WFAN right now, it'd be a problem. Yeah. Yeah. But we're not. We're not. So, all right. Yeah. No update yet on Jalen Brunson. So I'm sure we'll get something. And trade deadline coming up Thursday. Thursday at what? 12, right? Or three, uh, three I think. Three o'clock. Okay. I like that they do the trade deadline during the day instead of like the middle of the night or like when games would be going on and be trades yeah. happening, you know, yeah. like just get it done before the game so people can leave and make it yeah. awkward. I no, agree. Uh, no, uh, uh, what's his name? Flores, like in the Mets crying on the field kind of situation. Oh, that's that's a great memory. <laughs> well, Mark, that's a great memory. That was great. Yes. Mets legend. Okay. A lot of Mets references today, but that's it for uh, All right. the fans. Bad weather fans episode 207. Thanks to our presenting sub- sponsor DraftKings. Um, Alex, I'm going to let you take this one away because I am cooked. Well, thank you for this everybody you. for listening. Enjoy the Super Bowl. If there's a big trade that happens, we will pop on for a few minutes later this week. If not, if you know, just Fournier is traded for you know PJ Washington, I don't think we're going to hop on. <laughs> but you know, if there's something big that happens, maybe we'll do something, and maybe we'll anyway. Who knows? Keep it popping. Keep listening. We will, uh, you know, try to not to have any more Jada Kiss slip ups um, later on in the in the of the future episodes but if mike has a raspy voice still maybe we'll get another song going and you know send me your requests uh so thank you for listening episode 207 is in the books mike thank you very much you're welcome <laughs>